Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Chelsea. If you're new here, if you're not new, welcome back. I appreciate you coming back. Today we have quite a doozy of a Young Living Zoom call where all, all, all of the medical claims are going to be made. And I've heard that it is quite atrocious. So let's go ahead and before we actually get into this video, let's hear a quick word from our sponsor of today's video and then we can go ahead and jump into the cringe. All right, friends, so recently the compliment that I've gotten the most other than you're glowing is how much y'all love my brown hair. Now I loved, absolutely love having my Marilyn moment being blonde to the root, but let's be honest, that does get a bit damaging after a while. And I have gone back to my roots, literally. I've gone back to brown, clearly. This is my natural hair color. And that actually brings me to the sponsor of today's video, which is MD Hair. MD Hair is the world's first medical grade hair regrowth treatment that's customized to exactly what has been causing your hair loss. It's clinically proven and developed by dermatologists and formulated with FDA approved medical ingredients and then also botanical ingredients as well. And when using MD hair, you can actually feel good about what you are using, not only because of those great ingredients, but then also because it is paraben-free, cruelty-free, phalathate-free. I always have really hard time saying that word. Pretty sure I'm still not saying it right, but you get it. And all of their packaging as well is recyclable. And it all starts with their super and easy quiz that you take on their website, answer a few questions, and then go ahead and actually submit a picture of your scalp so that their little AI technology, which is pretty cool, can actually show where you are needing help. And y'all know that I have had breakage and I personally cannot wait for these pieces right here to get longer, y'all. They've already gotten a little bit longer and a little bit healthier, so I'm very thankful for that. I can finally put up my hair without my little, my little rat tails of breakage falling down, so we are on the right track. After taking the quiz, they sent me over the customized hair care conditioner and shampoo. And personally, I am a sucker for good color schemes and packaging, so I am absolutely loving this. I had this in my shower, so I'm really surprised that I actually kept the box that it came in <laughs> for this ad read. It's clearly torn because I couldn't wait to get into it. And then we have a serum as well that helps with the root cause of your hair loss and can help with a healthier scalp and hair regrowth. And then they also sent over the collagen as well and the supplements too. So MD Hair has you covered not only from your scalp, the outside of you, but then also the inside too. Remember that hair regrowth is a marathon, not a sprint, and people can usually start seeing results within six to eight weeks. And if y'all wanna get 70% off your first monthly kit with full-sized products, go ahead and use the link in my description box and in the pinned comment, and also my code SUAREZ70. Thank you again, MD Hair, for sponsoring this video, and let's go ahead and continue with this video. Okay, welcome back. So I have just one piece of paper for my notes. I have a feeling I'm gonna need more though, because this is a doozy. Now, this Zoom call, like I said, is from Young Living, and it's <laughs> the first thing on there it says fertility. So you already know this is not going to be good. And it says the pretty cries, the ugly cries, and everything in between. So just say, I I'm sure we're going to need a trigger warning on this one because like, this is not going to be good. I don't think I'm going to get upset by it because I just, I mean, I'll be fine. But if you are going through any type of infertility, fertility troubles, you're trying to conceive anything like that, go see a doctor go see a specialist, see see your OB, talk to them about it. They can refer you to a specialist. Make sure it's covered by your insurance. A lot of them are. I know you can feel broken. I get it. I felt that way as well. And it's like, wow, my body isn't doing like one of the main things it's supposed to do. But the important thing to remember is that you are valuable. Having kids doesn't mean that you're more or less valuable or like than anyone else who does. And yeah, you're amazing you are strong, your feelings are valid, no matter how you feel about it. Don't be weird and make anyone else feel bad about it. Just wanted to give that little pep talk before we get into this, because I know, I, I know this is going to get infuriating, okay? <laughs> okay, let's try to keep it funny and lighthearted here. Okay, I think we are live. Oh my goodness. Um, yes, we are live. Hi, I am Kat Fulton, and I'm going to make sure this is all working as soon okay, as you can hear me and see me drop a comment below let me know where you're tuning in from 
I'd love to know. I'm actually going to stop the share just for a quick second and show the full screen here. Can you see me? Can you hear me? I'd love to hear from you. I am going to share my screen here in a second. Good. We've got some people live. Welcome. Welcome. Just a little tip. Well, a little makeup tip. I didn't, I, you probably didn't realize you're going to get one of those in this video. Sometimes if you, like if you have a certain shape eye, if you do like really heavy eyeliner like up here and then have it go down here as well, like I have eyeliner on my waterline, but because of the way my eyes are shaped and it's like tight in there, it really accentuates my blue eyes and like makes them pop more. But sometimes if you do it a certain way, it can make your eyes look droopy and not accentuate that. So just be aware of that. Unless that's what you're going for. Hey, if that's what you're going for, go for it. Also, makeup washes off. So it's not really that big of a deal. But I just thought of that. A little, little tip here and there for you. Drop a message below. Let me know where you're tuning in from and let me know what you hope to get out of this. Um, I know that fertility is a very delicate topic. Um, trust me, I know, I know. I was on a fertility journey for five years um, in silence, you know, mostly silence, okay? Sharing with only a few select friends. And so I understand if you don't want to share, if you just want to share where you're tuning in from, then I'd love to hear that. And then if you'd like to elaborate on what you would like to get out of this presentation, then please let me know in a comment below. I would love to know where you are, where you want to be, so that um, I can provide just some resources. Where you are and where you want to be, what are you talking about? Like where you want to be in terms of like fertility? I would assume if you're struggling with fertility and like embarking on a fertility journey that like where you are is that you're trying to conceive and then that where you want to be is that you want to have a kid. It's pretty self-explanatory lady. Also, how is she going to help you with that? Because I don't think that she's a an OBGYN. I don't think she's a specialist in fertility. So why are you talking about it? Like what are what are you doing? At, um, I can provide just some resources for you. My story. Um, great, we have comments. Yay! Hi. Oh, excuse me. Okay, so we have hello from Belgium. Hi, Rena. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Okay, great. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and get started while people are filling up the room, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and, um, and I'm going to go ahead and move up the playback speed to 1.25 because she's going too slow. So fertility, the pretty cries, the ugly cries and everything in between. And it, it really is a roller coaster. If you've never been on a fertility journey, if you are one of the, you know, 85% of people in the world who have been blessed to not have to experience, um, fertility issues, then Please know that it's such an up and down roller coaster. And at any given moment, the person, your loved one or your friend who's going through this could be as high as the sky. And then the next moment could be as low as you can possibly go. A um, couple of stats for you, okay? In the United States, 12% of women 15 through 44, 15, age 15 through 44, have difficult getting pregnant or carrying pregnancy to term. And that has increased in the past year, and sorry, in the past um, almost 10 years, um, from 10% to 12%. So we know that in, um, fertility um, is, is, a, is a big topic. Like infertility is actually increasing. It's on the rise. <clears throat> We know that 15% of couples in the U.S. have trouble conceiving. We know that 48 and a half. Where are these stats coming from? I don't doubt the 12% stat. I mean, that sounds real. Not, I don't want to say real, but like that sounds like it could be true. Let me know what y'all think in the comments below. But I really do think that it's very like fear mongering. And even if someone hasn't tried to get pregnant or hasn't started to track their ovulation and really learn about that and talk to their doctor about it and get blood work done and all that, even if they haven't done all that, making them think like, oh, well, you can like get ahead of the game by using all of these products that will, you know, make it better or make it easier for you to get pregnant. And it's like, that's not accurate. An essential oil isn't going to make it easier for you to get pregnant. It might calm you down. And like, yeah, I mean, it's kind of like well known that if you're like really stressed, it's harder to get pregnant, but essential oils isn't going to help you with that. Million couples experience infertility globally. That's a lot of people, 48 and a half, 48.5 million couples. Um, we also know that fertility and your ability to conceive and carry a pregnancy to term declines drastically uh, when the woman turns 35 plus. We know that couples where the man is 40 years or older are more likely to have trouble. We know that infertility is one of the primary reasons for divorce, okay? Um, and so another couple of stats here. Couples who are experiencing infertility. I feel like that's not accurate, so I'm going to look it up. 
Okay, so according to ncbi.nlm.nih.gov, reputable site, commitment, infidelity, maybe she can't read and thought infidelity was infertility, conflict and arguing, which obviously like could be started by stressors that are brought on by infertility, marrying too young, financial problems, substance abuse, domestic violence. Yeah, I'd say in I'd say cheating, like infidelity and money are the top two. Yeah, five most common causes for divorce. Infidelity, lack of intimacy, lack of communication, addiction, and money. And that that's like from a law office. And then divorce.com. Seems like they know what they're talking about. Let's see what they say. Too much conflict, incessant arguing, so communication, lack of commitment, partners aren't fully committed to each other, infidelity, extramarital affairs, lack of emotion or physical intimacy, so like you aren't feeling loved, you're not really communicating there. Communication problems between partners, domestic violence, opposing morals or views, that's a big one too that people don't realize, which also that could fall back into communication. Addiction, drugs, gambling, sex, all that. Absence of romance, intimacy, one spouse not carrying their weight in the marriage, financial problems, marrying too young, lack of shared interest, incompatibility. Infertility is not on any of those lists. So I don't know. I just find, and I'm not saying that that doesn't cause issues. Like it, it can for sure. I mean, and that could go into lack of communication or communication problems. But I think, you know, kind of twisting words and making statistics your own, which is what a lot of people in MLMs do, can definitely, it definitely works its way into the fear-mongering aspect of this. And it's just like really convenient for them. Are more likely to have anxiety and depression going on. 41% of women who are having trouble conceiving have depression. 41% of women um, who are experiencing infertility have depression. That's a lot, okay. And then we know that 87, 87% of women who are having trouble conceiving experience anxiety. So thank you for coming and joining me. I am going to jump right into this. So how is she going to work this in? Like I am really going to be annoyed if she's like, and which is what I think she's going to do, but she's like, oh, well, setting all this up, like you don't want your marriage to fail. You don't want to have anxiety. You don't want to have depression. So therefore you better use all this stuff and be able to have a baby. So you good. We've got people tagging each other. Um, we have, uh, so we've had years of trying to get pregnant and anything additional I can try besides what I'm already taking. Okay, great. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story. And I was, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you my story and I'm also going to share a Dropbox, a Dropbox link of some really handy handouts in the chat and I'm going to pin it to the top of this video so that you can download these two documents. Uh, so let me just take the time to pin this comment that I just dropped. All right, pinning comment to the top. Okay, cool. So now I'm gonna um, <clears throat> I'm gonna share my story. And please keep in mind that my story is my story. Your story is gonna be different. We all know this. I do, I do just want to emphasize that, especially with this particular topic, because when you see things out there, hang on, in the world like this, like this slide. Okay, I'm just hopping ahead because I'm kind of like ad libbing this. When you see something that says the daily five minute fertility massage that helps me get pregnant, or even my headline to the caption of this video, my story of how I was able to increase my egg quality by six times. The person who is experiencing fertility struggles reads that and immediately says, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this right now. I know it's going to help me. Okay, this is my story. And you want to adopt it as your story as ASAP. And I want to encourage you to just step back, breathe, breathe, and take a moment because my story is my story. Your story is going to be your story. It's going to be different for everyone. And um, there, that's how it is. There's joy in everyone's stories being different, but there's also a lot of pain because you see your friends getting pregnant with no problem. You get it, you see your friends getting pregnant, surprise pregnant, right? <laughs> Have you ever had a friend get surprise pregnant when you were trying to get pregnant? And you're so, you are sincerely so happy for your friend. At the same time, you are experiencing so much internal pain, especially if this is a friend that maybe you can't, um, maybe you can't share everything with this particular friend. Maybe you're not sharing everything with this particular friend, and you just see all these people getting pregnant, and it's, it's it does a number on your mental health. It does a huge number on your mental health. So I just want you to know that if you are experiencing some fertility struggles, you're not alone at all, um, and there are so many people in the same boat. And there are, there are a lot of resources out there to help you. There are a lot of resources out there to help you, like your doctor, like your doctor. 
not some lady on a Zoom call who's taking advantage of people who are, this is not me being rude, but who are so desperate to get pregnant that they will try fertility massage every day. Or the ones who are, you know, trying literally everything every single day, eating eating something weird every day to try to increase whatever. Go to your doctor. I don't know. It's just really frustrating. Like, I feel like at some point, and people are not going to want to hear this, but I feel like at some point you have to have the conversation. Like, I know, like, we want this so bad, but are just us, like, me and you are, are like, we enough for each other. And I know that's really deep. And I know that sucks to say. But like we had to have that conversation. It was rough. And of course, he was like, yeah, it's fine. We'll just get a bunch of bulldogs. And I was like, okay, thanks. I mean, if you see these types of things, talk to your doctor about it and be like, can this type of massage help? Can acupuncture help? Can, you know, eating this or changing my diet or, you know, working out help? In my opinion, yeah. I'm not an expert, but working out can definitely help. Eating healthier can help. Don't go crazy with it. Don't stress yourself out. But I mean, I personally think like living a healthier life, I mean, makes you happier. And then like you're, I don't know, like kind of conditioning your body, I guess. What do I know? Nothing. Good. We've got people sharing stories. All right. Yeah. My daughter has given up. It's just only 31. Yeah. I mean, I gave birth at age 40. I turned 41 the next day. Okay. So, um, you know, you never know. Um, okay, great. People are sharing. Yeah, please share your stories if you're comfortable. And if not, then let me know where you're tuning in from. Love to hear from you. And I'm so glad that people are joining us today. I'm going to, I'm going to lay it all out there. If you look at the pinned comment to this video, then you'll see a Dropbox link to a bunch of, to two handouts that are going to help. But then there's a book that I want to recommend. And, um, the book is called It Starts With The Egg, and I can't recommend it higher, high enough, so I'm just going to get to the punchline and tell you that. And I'm going to tell you how I arrived at uh, my our result of having our beautiful daughter, Jillian, and um, all the pains and struggles that led up to that, and what I learned, and what I would do differently if I were to do it all again, okay? So this is me, a little bit about me. I am a strong person. I'm independent. I'm self-sufficient. I love to work hard and play hard, both. I love to live life fully, as fully as I possibly can. Um, and I am a person who is known to achieve whatever goals I set for myself in life, okay? I mean, I am. I can be really intense, um, but I love it. I love living my life that way. I love going all in. There's no question in my mind that I will not have regrets when I die because I will have given it my best shot. I will have done everything, um, to the best of my ability. I know, like, I know that, you know, so I'm thankful for that. Okay. I just looked up that book. Obviously I have not read it, but the Google panel for it says a practical and evidence-based or evidence-backed very different, approach for improving egg quality and fertility, fully revised and updated in 2019. The latest scientific research reveals that egg quality has a powerful impact on how long it takes to get pregnant and the risk of miscarriage. Yeah, clearly. Am I just being pretentious that I'm like, yeah, obviously, you'll have a better chance of getting pregnant if you got a lot of eggs, like, and like, if you got good quality eggs too, like, duh. <laughs> uh, what? Why do we need to read a book to tell us that? If you are a gynecologist or a fertility specialist, a doctor, please leave in the comments below and tell me if this is completely b Thanks. If you're not, I don't care what you have to say. <laughs> Just kidding. I love you still, but like... I know, like I know that, you know, and so I'm thankful for that. At the same time, the weird thing about infertility is that, you know, when you're a goal-oriented person, and I'm futuristic too, and I, some of my strengths are like, I have a million ideas a minute, I'm optimistic, I'm futuristic, I'm entrepreneurial, I love life, I dive in headfirst to what- I don't know why it's just so funny that she said futuristic. I'm futuristic, I'm flying around in a flying car, I'm in a hovercraft, I'm taking money from my husband after he before he drops me out of the bottom of a hovercraft. I have a robot named Rosie, she cleans for us. I achieved my goals, but the weird thing about fertility was that I couldn't figure it out. And the other weird thing is I wanted to have fun with it. I wanted to have fun. Let's get, let's have fun getting pregnant. I wanted to have fun with fertility. What? That sounds weird. You couldn't figure it out. I got an idea. Go to a doctor. Super simple. You just sit there in a the doctor's office. I say it's super simple. It's not. And it can be very scary. Yes, it's our bodies and like we should know a good amount about it, but you, you go to a doctor. It's like if you have a weird mole on you, you're not like, oh my God, I just can't figure out if this has, if this is cancerous. No, what you do is you go to your dermatologist or a dermatologist, and then you have one, they're yours now. And you say, hey, does this look weird? And then they're gonna be like, yeah, that does look weird. And then you're gonna be like, cool, get it off. And they're gonna be like, okay, got it. 
have fun. Let's get, let's have fun getting pregnant. Let's have fun having lots and lots of sex so that we can get as pregnant as possible. <laughs> Is there such a thing as getting as pregnant as possible? I don't know, but let's do that. Let's 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 give it a shot. Listen, I love the positivity because it can get real not fun. And like, is I feel like the more like not fun you make it, then it's like, I don't want to say it's like a chore, but listen, some of you, some of y'all get it. If you're like, oh yeah, got that timer or you just know when you're ovulating and you're like, let's get down to business and you're like, let's just do it for like four days in a row. And then, you know, it's like, sometimes it's not too fun. <laughs> At first I was like, the her attitude is weird, but I mean, I get it. I understand. I get it. But it's also just like, it's cringe. And why are you talking about this? I'm not saying don't share your story. Go for it. Please do help others not feel alone. There's a difference between that. And I don't want to be like a difference between what I do and what she does. But like, yes, difference between that and then like what Brittany Dawn does makes over 50 different reels and posts and videos about her having a miscarriage, allegedly lying about the timeline of that, which is not good. Don't do that to try to garner more sympathy. Like either way, it's sad. Like, it's still sad, girl. Could have just been honest, but no. She's like, I lost it in the middle of the third month. And a lot of people were like, that's a weird way to phrase that, girl. And so that's how I went into this. Like, okay, we got married. Um, Okay, yeah. So Matt and I got married in 2014, and we, we did... Uh, he wasn't ready to try, but I wanted to try right away because... Uh, first of all, I was 35 years old. And uh, again, I, I just knew I wanted to have a baby. I wanted to have babies. So... Um, so I wanted to try right away. He wanted to give it six months just to have some stability in his job. So we gave it six months and then we started trying. And then it's like, you know, month after month, I kept thinking, okay, well, let's skip this month because we don't have, we want to have a baby in December and have our baby's birthday coincide with Christmas, right? We, want, we don't want, we don't want to have that issue. We want to make sure that her birthday is, or, or his birthday, their birthday is separate from Christmas. So that they, you know, you go through all these thoughts like, okay, let's skip this month. Let's not try this month because let's be really picky and choosy. And then eventually after trying for six months to a year, you get to the point of like, huh, something is funny about this. Um, the other thing about fertility is that, you know, what, what it looks like on the outside, whew, what it looks like on Instagram is different than what, it ha what happens in real life. And all of you know this already. Um, but you know, okay, this is me after I got pregnant, right? Oh, I'm so happy. I'm, 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 um, my bump is popping out and it's so fun and it's so cool. Um, but at the same time, I mean, really, this is kind of what it looked like, but even these pictures, I'm not the type of person to take a picture of myself when I'm crying and when I'm suffering and when I'm in pain. So even these private pictures that I wouldn't share on social media do not, do not paint the picture of the true struggle and true pain and true weirdness of infertility. Okay. And, and here's my kitty cat supporting me, but it's like, it's almost like even friends who have fertility struggles don't always understand the type of struggle that you're having. And it's kind of coming to a point of acceptance that like, okay, and, and, be, and knowing like, who do I want to share this with? Who do I not want to share this with? And for me at the time, I did not want to share it just publicly on social media because I don't want thousands of people grieving with me, experiencing the pain with me. Open the space and allow them to speak and at the same time, try to reserve your own projections of your own worries and your own fears about their journey. And you can be open about your intention to do that. This is weird. All right, I gotta do it to two speed because this is dumb. So I've learned in this process, I've learned, <clears throat> okay. So basically, um, okay, basically, I rarely see doctors in the first place, but I do love medical intervention, Western medical intervention, in intervention in cases of emergency trauma or dire circumstances. And I found out that for me, for this, it turned out to be a dire circumstance. And I'll share more in a second. Some people will get your fertility journey and others won't. And then the people who get your fertility journey, they won't always get it either. Even if they are also on a fertility journey, they won't always understand the way you're experiencing the fertility journey. That's why this is such a delicate thing, such a delicate um, thing. Okay, so I um, also learned that it's so important to keep spending most of your time doing what you love to do and not to perseverate and obsess over this fertility journey because it takes so much time and patience. And then regret, shame, and guilt, like, oh, I should have tried earlier then. Okay, I should have tried earlier in life, well, maybe I missed my chance. Or, oh, you know, I don't have enough money to, to try this type of modality or this type of therapy or this type of supplement or this type of intervention. But, um, you know, all these things holding you back, mm, you get to decide what is true for you and what is not. But I will say, get on Young Living Supplements ASAP because that is my biggest learning in all of this that I'm so looking forward to sharing with you what happened. It truly is a miracle to me in my life. Um, so here's my husband, got married in 2014. He's the sweetest, most wonderful guy ever. Um, and he supported me the whole way, even though he didn't understand my fertility journey. And it's like, they never quite do fully understand. And that's okay. So, you know, part, sometimes it felt really lonely. There we go. 14 minutes in to this video. Not this, not this one that we're doing, but this one that she's done. Get on Young Living Supplements ASAP. Yikes. Also, like, I rarely see doctors, but love medical intervention in cases of emergency trauma or dire circumstances. That's a weird way to phrase that. 
that's really weird. The I I do agree with what she's saying about like the guilt and stuff like that. You can sit here and be like, I should have done this. I should have done that. I should have done this. But or like I should have started working out earlier. I should have been taking better care of my body. I should have gotten this test done and like genetic testing done and all that. You can't change the past. So stop dwelling on it. You freak. I just start berating you. I rarely see doctors. Well, how about you go like, were you not seeing an OB this entire time? Like, just go in and make sure everything's okay. Especially, like, at your... First of all, you should be seeing a dentist every six months. You should be seeing your... I mean, go to therapy, obviously. And go to your OBGYN if you have a cooter and a uterus. Or if you don't have a uterus, that's fine. If you have those organs down there, you should go see a your OB. And I know I'm going to have someone in the comments because I always do whenever I say go to therapy or go to the, you know, do this, do that. There's always at least like five people who are like, oh, it's not that easy. I get that. That's why people don't go. Oh, well, it's expensive. I understand it can be. If you have insurance and then if you can't afford insurance, look into Medicaid or Medicaid or disability something so that you can take care of your body. It might be privileged of me to say that, you know, I can't afford it isn't an excuse. And I know I understand it. Yes, it sucks. But then don't complain about it. It sucks. I get it. But like, you need to go see a doctor. <sighs> so it doesn't sound like she was like actively seeing, and I don't know, but actively seeing a medical professional regarding this. And then she just put herself on Young Living supplements. And now she's going to put everyone else on it or suggest everyone else get on it. Like, that's not, no. No. Um, so here's my husband, got married in 2014. He is the sweetest, most wonderful guy ever. Um, and he supported me the whole way, even though he didn't understand my fertility journey. And it's like, they never quite do fully understand and that's okay. So, you know, part, sometimes it felt really lonely. Um, and I think that's part of the, of the struggle and part of this human experience, especially if you're going through fertility struggles is like the feeling lonely. Like you're, you're, you're the minute you start thinking, I must be the only one um, that's when you start asking yourself, is that true? No, it's not true. You are not the only one. Um, just because you feel lonely right now does not mean like, you know, you have to check yourself. If you've ever heard of Byron Katie, she is a great example. Read the book, Loving What Is. Um, she is a great, um, I'm not a professional. I'm not a specialist. I'm not an expert. I'm just a lady with a camera and a bulldog who will not stop snoring. I can guarantee you though, lady, that didn't help. Also, from Healthline.com, unfortunately, little to no research supports the idea that self-fertility massages help you conceive. That said, research benefits in general, and it may help you relax and reduce stress, which are, like I've said before, two factors that are very important in trying to conceive. And so in terms of, oh yeah, like these essential oils really helped me get pregnant. It's like, well, no, they didn't do that. It helped calm you down. It's just like when people say like, oh, well, lavender oil like helps me sleep. Listen, we have lavender oil, not from there, but we get all of it from Target. And I'll like put a little on my hands and like spill sp a little spritz, a little spritz of it on, on the bed, like on our pillows, not where Wiggum sleeps. But I do that and like make sure our room smells good and like burn a candle like while I'm reading my book before we go to bed. The room smells really good and that like helps calm us down and put us in like a better mood and then we're able to sleep better. So that's what it does. <laughs> it's not helping me sleep. It's helping me feel better and calm down so that I can fall asleep easier. She has great wisdom on how to check your thoughts and what you're telling yourself through this journey because it's so important to keep yourself um, in a good place. So important to take care of you in your mental health throughout this journey. So important. If I think mental health is more important than any kind of intervention. Okay, so this was me. I did mine abdominal, uh, abdominal, abdominal massage. I did like all the fertility stuff. I did um, special belly massages. I did acu acupuncture, acupressure, like everything I did. Um, I did so, so, so much. And then um, finally, after a few months of trying everything in that arena, as far as natural and, and then I would go to the oil groups and I would take, I would look and I would see like just light. I'm like, search for the word fertility. Okay, see what comes up. You search for the word um, pregnancy, see what comes up. And, I would find like little tidbits here and there, but they weren't ever like structured protocols, but that's fine because I wanted to keep it light. I wanted to have fun. I wanted to like, like, let's just have lots of sex and see what happens. Isn't that how it's supposed to come about, right? And so that was my, I wanted it to be like that. Um, and it didn't end up being like that, but it's okay because we have an amazing baby that I'll show you pictures of in a second. So at the, like, at the end of her story, what she's going to end up saying is something like, oh, and then we went and saw a fertility specialist. Well, clearly that's what helped you then. Not all this other 
that you're talking about. I would just pick up here and there. Okay, I should add a little bit more vitamin D. Oh, you know, when Young Living came out with a vitamin D supplement, oh great, let's add that one to my regimen. Okay, omega dyes. I'll get my fish oils. I get my um my master formula. So my basic uh, multivitamin as well as my probiotic to keep the um the biome good in my belly and everything. Make sure that everything is being really absorbed. And I'll just keep doing that. So, but light ad advice from who? So does she actually like have panels that show like, hey, actually you have low this or high this. Like you need to do take blah, blah, blah. Or is she just like, I'm going to take all the things that help with my gut biome. I hate it. Still nothing, right? And it was so, um, it was actually very frightening. Um, <clears throat> because of course, as time goes on, you're getting older and older. And when I was in my thirties, 10 years ago, I never listened to that. I never listened to someone saying, saying, as time goes on, you're getting older and older. Like I just, I would always be, no, 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 no. I will be forever young. I am never going to adopt an older person mindset. No, I am always going to be young at heart. I'm always going to be open to new ideas. I'm always going to be willing to learn and change. So what I learned is yes, and you can be older and be all those things too. Um, so whenever I would hear someone talk about fertility and aging, I would just turn it off. Um, I, I don't know if that was my own, like trying to protect myself or denial or what, but uh, eventually I did see a doctor, my primary care doctor, and I don't know if this was my naivete or what, but I, I didn't realize that she, um, she was in, into NAPRO technology. Okay, if you've never heard of NAPRO technology, it's called the Crichton model of NAPRO technology. And I think it's really kind of cool, but it's very subjective too. So it's the kind of thing where every single day, multiple times a day, you're checking your cervical mucus. You are literally sticking your fingers up there and checking your cervical mucus. And when it's two inches or longer, then you're like, oh, baby, baby, we got it. We got it. Like, let's have some special timer right now. <laughs> I feel so embarrassed talking about this, but that's, this is that. Okay. So that's really funny that she's saying like, oh yeah, she was very into this. And it's like, that's your, like your cervical, you can call it cervical mucus or cervical fluid, but your cervical fluid is, why do you think every app Y'all, if you have a ladies and gentle thems, if you, I had, I heard someone say gentle thems on my favorite murder podcast. I was like, oh, I love that so much. Gentle them. So go look on your, your period tracker app or whatever you have. And one of the little, like, you know, when you track like your symptoms or whatever, and it'll say like, do you take a fertility test? Do you take a pregnancy test? Blah, blah, blah. And like all that stuff. If you go down, it'll ask what your cervical fluid looks like. And it'll say like, is it like water? Is it like, like egg whites? Is it like glue? Is it like sticky and all that. I know it's weird that I'm saying this, but it's important to know that like the consistency of it is typically like your body's way of showing like, yeah, this is when we're ovulating. And then it just globs onto this stuff, you know, and then gets it up there. And like, it's like a, I was about to say a Venus flytrap, but you know, I don't know why she's saying like that. It's so like, it's subjective. Well, lady, that's your, that's your body telling you like, yes, I am ovulating right now and like I'm in my fertile window so it's just so funny that she's like all about taking young living and doing a massage and acupuncture but then like the one thing where your body is like doing something different specifically so that it can you know like get ready to make a baby she's like well you know my doctor was really into this but that's how it was. so you see the little babies on the days those are like two inch plus or what you know one inch plus cervical mucus days it's like um, ooh, baby, baby, right? It's time to get out your sensation massage oil. It's time to get out, you know, all your florals to get everybody like in the mood and, you know, get, get that good juju pumping. And, um, okay. And of course, you know, you're trying to, we tried everything. I was like, okay, now when we're done, I literally would be upside down for like a minute. If I could, if I could tolerate being upside down for a minute, I would literally not go to the bathroom afterwards because I'm like, well, I don't want anything to escape that might need to stay in the environment. Oh my God. First of all, how many UTIs did you have? Because I am slipping off the bed and running to the bathroom bow legged. <laughs> so that I can pee and you everything that is like supposed to be up there like you're not gonna pee pee everything out like whatever is like up there is already up there that like it, you know but again I think it's important like she even said that she like only went to her primary care doctor not an OBGYN so like why wouldn't you and don't get me wrong I I love my primary care doctor he's amazing so like I get it but it's also like <laughs> you're you're saying that you're taking it so seriously but then you you haven't even seen your OBGYN yet. You haven't seen the doctor that like specializes in, in vaginas. So what are you doing? Just in case a miracle is waiting to happen. Um, and you know, we did everything. So we, we tried this position and that position and every, like go Google how to get pregnant. We did it all. We did all of that. Okay. At the same time, I was checking my cervical, cervical because you do it when you wake up in the morning, you do it before your first, um, before the first time you go pee, you do it after your first pee of the day, you do it um, then before and after every time you go to the bathroom that whole day, um, right before you go to bed, like you're just checking the whole day and then you document the juiciest document, subjective documentation that you got. <laughs> this is never technology. Now, <clears throat> what I did not know, oh, good, Chris is totally comfortable with cervical mucus talk. Awesome, great. <laughs> Okay, what I did not know is that my doctor, the reason she did the Crichton model of nephro technology technique here, that you see on the screen here, the reason she was into this is because she was anti-IVF. And I did not know that. I'm so naive. I'm so naive. I didn't know. 
so the doctor I seen was a very religious doctor and I didn't know that either. I'm so naive. So like, I'm, yeah. Um, but if I know that I might have made a different decision. But I, That's also extremely inappropriate. Your doctor has a fiduciary duty to you to do what is best for you, no matter what their views are. So I feel really bad that she like went through this with this doctor, but also the doctor you're seeing isn't an, an OBGYN. Like that's, it's, she already said it's her primary care doctor. So I feel bad for this person that she had to go through that, but also you're spreading, I don't want to say spreading more misinformation, but she is. She's already spread a lot of misinformation on this topic in this call. So that's frustrating. And it is a long call. And so I'm going to try to cut it down if I can. But y'all know I don't like to do that. I do not like to cut out calls, especially Zoom calls, because then I feel like people will, I don't know, like I, I don't want anything that I say being taken out of context. And that happens to everybody. So I never want to do that. But I don't know, I feel like I've been like rambling, not rambling, but talking a lot. So maybe I'll cut down what I say. <laughs> See me, I'm like, no, let's do it natural. Let's do it natural. You know, and so anyway, the point is, okay, point is after trying this for a year, and you should see all my charts. I'm sure I kept them somewhere in the garage. After doing this for a year, I and working with a coach, talking to, and oh, so embarrassing, getting on a Zoom call with my husband to talk to this older lady. Um, she, she had grandma vibes. She felt like my grandma, my napro technology coach, telling her about my cervical mucus. Uh, it was so, so weird. We did this for a year. We did this for a year. And then um, finally, I realized, you know, we're not getting anywhere, people, because I am not pregnant. And I'm a goal-oriented person, and the goal is to get pregnant, and we're not even close. What the heck, right? So, <clears throat> Yeah, Lucy says when you have mucus, you're most likely ovulating. And this is how this chart shows. So you see the red is obviously a period and then you ovulate not that. It's just, okay. So it's funny that someone commented and she just read off their comment and they're like, cervical fluid is when you're ovulating. And the person said like, yeah, it's most likely when you're ovulating. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's your fertile window. So it's just funny that she's like, yeah, it's necro, blah, 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 blah. Making it sound all complicated. And it's like, it's, that's not complicated. Just figure that out. Talk to your OBGYN. Actually go to one. Because again, by this time, she has, and I'm just going off what she said, but she has not stated that she went to an OBGYN yet. But this is what happens when, you know, you're in this type of environment or community where they're like, oh, natural's best, natural's best. Not everyone can do that naturally. But instead of putting yourself through the stress of, and this is just my opinion, but instead of putting yourself through the stress of like, I'm going to keep going, 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 trying to do it natural, trying to do it natural and do all these crazy things that I'm putting my body through and my mind through and then also spreading misinformation instead of just making an appointment to see an infertility doctor and i get that it's super expensive so the babies are when you're when your cervical mucus is super stretchy you want egg white super stretchy and all that good stuff and then you're ovulating and then hey maybe maybe it's a good time maybe that means that a sperm and egg are gonna meet up and have a little dance together okay didn't happen for me that way did not happen so <clears throat> what we did um and by the way this is when my husband was unemployed i was making all the money so we had to make a decision we did talk to a fertility doctor like um like a real intervention, medical, Western medical intervention, IVF lady, and uh, went to a fertility clinic and discussed. And she said, well, okay, you're, I think I was 39, 39. So you're 39, so what, or 30, or 38, going on 39, I don't know. She said, we can try IUI, um, or we can just go straight for IVF. And so I said, okay, let's try IUI. But let's, she said, usually when we do IUI, we get it three times before then we suggest IVF. So I'm like, okay, we tried IUI, but I only did it two times because I was impatient being the goal oriented person. I'm like, okay, the IUI is not working, so let's go straight for IVF. And so um, we did. We had a, yeah, I did all the things. Um, we had to do um, shots in, in my stomach over and over for many months leading up to the um, retrieval date. And granted, my husband gets wheezy around needles. And I'm like, oh, no, oh, no, you're not. Uh -uh. <laughs> no, you are doing this. You are doing this. Um, you know, yeah, everything was on my shoulders, you guys. That's crazy. Uh, so we did a retrieval. And this is what it looked like. Actually, it was really promising. And the doctor was like, this is really, this is great news. So you'll see that the total, total number of eggs retrieved is 18. And then everything was pending day one, pending day three. So they do check like on odd, on all the odd days, day one, day three, day five. So day zero is when they pull the eggs and day zero is when they, they retrieve 18 eggs. And so then everything was pending day one, day three, day five, and then they do six and seven. Okay. So um, this was great news. And our doctor was like, oh, congratulations. 18 eggs is a huge deal. But guess what? There was a piece of information that she was missing on their little report to us. And I'll tell you what that was in a second. And she was like, oh, 18 were pulled, 14 were mature, and 10 of them fertilized, which is a very normal stats. She's like, very possible that we'll be able to get an embryo out of this because every time they check, the number goes down by half. And so you're starting out at 18, day one, you get to 10, very normal, not a problem. Then we're pending day three, right? Day three, okay, four. Four embryos are still developing, cats are not bad. So what they do is they pull your eggs and then they inject, they, they do this ICSI thing, ICSI. They inject the egg with a sperm and that actually um, makes it more likely that the sperm and the egg are going to do the thing, become an embryo. Okay, so four on day three. Now let's look at day five. Are you ready? Day five, day five, day five, day five. Zero. Oh. So if you can see my screen through the captions, I think the captions are covering up day five. On day five, the screen says zero. And then I was devastated and I cried all day and I was so scared and worried. I'm like, oh my gosh, I guess we're not, this isn't going to happen. Day six, zero, day seven, zero. It was so depressing. And then we got this email on top of it <coughs> just to rub it in our faces a little bit more. Unfortunately, we do not have any embryos eligible for biopsy and freeze the cycle. So <sighs> I wish I had better news for you and understand how disappointing this outcome is. Nothing, no kind of wordsmithing that they can use makes any of this easier to swallow. Um, at all. Okay. So that's when we set an appointment with the doctor and we're like, you were so optimistic. What the heck? And so we asked the doctor, we're like, why were you so optimistic? And she's like, yeah, well, I still am optimistic. And it's like, well, we just spent $15,000 for nothing. What's going on? You know? And so then she's like, so then she says, look, um, 
okay, there's a book that I recommend. And so I'm just going to stop sharing. So there, she said, there's a book that I recommend uh, reading. And she was really honest with us. She is a medical doctor. And she's like, look, medical doctors do not have time to look into supplements that can support you along, along this journey. But um, other people have time on their hands to really look into the research on supplements that can help you in this journey. And so I said, okay, you know, what gives, what's going on? And she told me a book called It Starts With The Egg. So here's what I recommend doing. This is the answer to your questions or to your loved ones. Okay, I don't think that's true because, you know, doctors don't have time to look into the supplements. Figuring out like panels and blood work and testing and things like that and like maybe genetic testing too. And again, this entire conversation, like all of these things are expensive. I get it and insurance might not pay for all of it. I understand. That's not the conversation we're having here. But having like that, it, that kind of is the doctor's job. Very frustrating. So then she suggested said she get this book it starts with the egg and then that was telling her to take all these supplements basically and then i'm assuming she's going to start talking about young living supplements um whoever you're supporting your friends questions get the book it starts with the egg and then go to the back of the book where she gives protocols and use young living supplements for all of her recommendations she gives protocols that are based upon your condition your doctor told you to use young living supplements that doctor should have their license revoked your age your status and, you know, whether it's just, oh, unexplained infertility, mine was unexplained infertility, or if your story is about having PCOS, or if your story is about having recurring miscarriages, or if your story is about, I mean, um, I can't remember all the rest of them, but they're all laid out at the very back of that book, okay? This might be the answer to someone's prayer out there. It was the answer to our prayer. Um, and I, I hope it's the answer to someone else's prayer. Get this book, use all Young Living Supplements, that plug in the Young Living Supplements to all these protocols that she has you walk through in the back of the book, and be so serious about doing the protocols. I mean, I was taking supplements sometimes seven times in a day, seven different times a day, because you're supposed to take certain supplements before breakfast, eat breakfast, after breakfast, mid-morning, take some more supplements, and then you have lunch, and then after lunch, take more supplements, another batch of supplements, mid-afternoon, take another batch of supplements, before dinner, another batch of supplements, after dinner, some more supplements, and then right before you go to bed, a whole another um, batch of supplements. Do you see what I'm saying? But it only lasts three months. But what worked for me was going into this like I go into anything else where I'm take no prisoners, I am unshakable, you cannot move me, I am going to be on top of this, and I'm not gonna miss any supplements, and I'm gonna be a complete ridiculous um what's the word? I, I I'm going to be a maniacal person, but I'm, I'm gonna be like, you cannot shake me from this protocol. Okay, and it's only three months. So that that's the reason I could handle it because it only lasts three months, right? So what they what the doctor said is that, um, you know, just read this book and see if anything worth it. You know, my, my doctor's like, yeah, see if you get anything out of this book. She did not tell me to take this book seriously. No, I took it upon myself. So that day after we met with the doctor, I went straight to Audible on my phone. I ordered the book. Um, I played it two times as fast, several times in, in the back of the book protocols. I made my husband listen to it while we were driving in the car. Um, and then I started writing out the protocol that was suitable for me. And then I, I was like, oh look, Young Living has vitamin D. Oh look, Young Living has omega threes, fish oil, you know, omega dyes. Um, oh look, Young Living has multivitamin. Oh look, Young Living has CoQ10. Uh, blah 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 blah. blah. So I cannot recommend this book highly enough. Um, I'll, I'll keep sharing my screen here one second. <clears throat> okay, so what she covers in the book is every, oh my gosh, listening to the, this book, I thought I was at a Young Living convention. Like you need to get these tests done. You need to figure out like what, I don't want to say wrong with you, but like what is missing is what I like to say instead so that you can, you know, plug supplements or vitamins or whatever into what you need to do, have some treatment done, who knows? But it's just, it's really frustrating. Preaching all of the same things that we learn through Young Living education. And it's interesting because it's like, before 2018, when I was going on this journey, I, and, and when I was involved in Young Living, I was like, yeah, I want to live naturally. Yeah, I want, I want, to, I want to do everything natural. And I want to like, you know, reduce um, endocrine dis disruptors. I want to reduce any kind of weird things that are causing my hormones to spike or dip or, of course I do, of course I do. But I had never heard someone educate like Young Living educates. And I just thought Young Living was this kind of like, this diamond in the sky, this miracle that just came into my life when I really wanted to get serious about my, like my fertility and living naturally, et cetera, et cetera. I didn't realize that there were people outside of Young Living who felt as strongly about reducing BPA, minimizing phthalates, getting rid of your plastic Tupperwares and replacing them with glass, you know, using glass instead of plastic and uh, not to, like the receipts at the store. Th don't touch those. Those, are, those have terrible, um, terrible, yucky little um, endocrine disruptors on them. Okay. Um, also, I mean, I, I, of course, I've heard taking prenatal is important before. Don't touch receipts. What? <laughs> Oh my God, and having glass instead of plastic and blah, blah, blah. Like your food storage containers, your Pyrex is probably not the reason you can't get pregnant. Like don't be blaming your Tupperware lady, which yes, Tupperware is an MLM. So there you go. But the way she explains it in the book is very solid research backed, um, just like you would listen to, to Education at a Young Living Convention, blown away. And then the way she talks about sugar control, I had heard this again at a Young Living Convention, but I had never heard someone outside of Young Living explain it just the same way that they do it. And I mean, it's beautiful. It was such validation for me um, in trusting this company uh, and, and knowing that, wow, I'm on the right track. I just need to make some refinements and some tweaks and get a little bit more specific about how- So it sounds like she got like re-brainwashed by this book. And also, if you've never, heard, and the way she's saying, like, she's never heard anyone else talk about it the way Young Living talked about it. And it's like, it's, and then saying, like, oh, I always wanted to be, like, all natural and do all this and that. And it's like, well, it sounds like you haven't actually, like, talked to, like, someone in the medical field about this type of stuff. Because mo I don't want to be, like, most of it's, but, like, most of it's fear mongering is what it is. My nutrition and my intake of these supplements. And let's see what happens, okay? The other thing she recommends in the book is getting tested for your hormones, which I did too. Um, and what I, what the doctor said I had was um, phase three 
uh, latency. So my ovulation would happen like too too late in order to be effective for conceiving. So that was your issue. Like it is just glorious that she left like left that out, but then like slipped it in there. Like yeah, my you know my ovulation was later, so that it, then it like wasn't good for conceiving. Well, that was your issue, girl. Not your food storage containers and not your CVS receipts. If that's on your radar. Um, and then she says getting your thyroid tested as well. And I, I found out that I had thyroid deficiency. So I um, started doing, um, I forgot the thyroid one, you guys. And it starts with an E. Ruby Lucy can help me. The, the E one, the, the thyroid one. And you put it right here on your thyroid to support it. Endogize. Endogize. Thank you. Endogize. All right. <clears throat> so I was on the right path. It's just like I needed to make some tweaks and refinements. So this is how I converted it for what I needed. Um, you see at the left of the screen, it says ISWT. It starts with the egg. That stands for it starts with the egg. And then YLEO is Young Living Essential Oils. And so everything that it starts with the egg, she recommended in the book, I was able to match it with Young Living. So I know that folic acid is covered in master formula and super B. I knew that CoQ10 is covered with omega gyes and or mind wise as well. I knew that antioxidants that she keeps talking about in the book to um, rid your system of free radicals. We've heard this a million times at Young Living presentations, right? Read it starts with the egg and then you'll hear it more and, and you'll feel very validated in our Young Living education, which is so solid. Um, Antioxidants, ninja, hello, huge, so important. DHEA um, is covered in Prenolone Plus and PDA20 and uh, Endogize. Uh, melatonin is covered in sleep essence. Ooh, big one, especially if you're going through IVF. Vitamin D3 um, is covered in Omega Gize and Master Formula. And then thyroid, thyroid support, Endoflex. That's what I meant, not Endogize. Endogize is a supplement, Endoflex is the oil that, that you put right here on your thyroid. Um, okay, so really effective. This chart is in the Dropbox. Put it, I love that she's like, yeah, you put an oil right here on your thyroid. First of all, that's called your neck. I understand like your thyroid is like right here because a lot of y'all like to comment and say that I have an enlarged thyroid. Listen, girl, we just got a fat neck in this house, okay? We just got fat necks. I am the mayor of Trap City and it's okay. It's a new position to me. It's fine. We are muscle mommies on this channel. Link that I put in the pinned comment to this video. <clears throat> and then I, then I did a little bit more digging into some of our groups because our, our young living groups are so incredibly uh, valuable. So valuable. So read this comment I found. I use prenolone cream topically. Our Facebook groups that are full of people spreading misinformation who those people don't know what they're talking about, but also don't ingest oils. I don't care if it's in a capsule. That's not okay. Those capsules can break open and destroy your internal organs and the linings of your stomach and your esophagus. That's not good. It's kind of cream topically. Lady Sclerol as perfume. Sclerosis and homey capsules and feminine capsules and Ninja Red. Three months every day and conceive my third month. This was months after having tried Clomid for three months. Letrozole for three months. Several failed IUIs. I'm being told by two fertility docs my only chance was IVF. Good luck. So comments like these, I would take note of. And remember, that story's not my story, but what can I take from this? She said two different things that, that came back from her testing and her panels that she did. So it's like, no, that was the issue. All this other stuff you're doing doesn't, I don't want to say it doesn't matter, but it's like, that's not the issue at hand. And you're making it seem like these like saved you when they didn't because you're you weren't addressing the actual problem because you didn't know the actual problem well ladies clear as perfume i did prenolone cream was already doing that twice a day according to the protocol as laid out in the book sclerescence i actually took <coughs> eight drops of sclerescence in a capsule every morning i think it was a post-breakfast part of the post-breakfast regimen um i did do femgen capsules twice a day i think it was twice a day and i did ninja red as well a couple times a day so you know there were comments that i saw that i'm like remember her story is not my story but what can i learn from this what can i what can i incorporate into my own story. So I came up with my own regimen. So this is what I would do, okay? These are the seven times a day that I would take supplements, right? Before breakfast, Endoflex, um, on Endoflex here, Super C, uh, chewable tablets, two Ninja packets with breakfast, Omega Gize, Chlorescence, eight drops in a capsule, Master Formula, Super B, and Femigen. I think it was two capsules of Femigen after breakfast. We had, I had prenolone cream and I would rub it at my lower abdomen, Lady Sclerol, um, wearing as perfume, progestance plus, I would put it on the insides of my arms. Before lunch, two Ninja packets and Super C with lunch and DHE. Putting something that smells good on the inside of your arms as perfume. First of all, pretty sure that smells disgusting. So good luck with that. And then rubbing a cream on your lower abdomen, those things are not going to help you get pregnant. Again, they're leaving out like the key factors of what was missing and what the actual issue was. And they're not addressing the actual issue. Packets and Super C with lunch, a DHA pill um, at dinner. Prenolone Plus, as, again, rubbing on my lower abdomen, Omega Gize and Mind Wise, and before bed, Master Formula Femigen, I, uh, Life 9 and Sleep Essence. Now I would do Life 9 a little bit closer to bedtime so that I did. So I didn't want Life 9 too. Um, conflict with the master formula or anything else that was in my stomach at the time, okay? Because you know the probiotics can conflict with some other supplements. So you want to try to take it as um, alone and as isolated as you possibly can. So this is also in the Dropbox um, link in the pinned comment to this post. So I just want to talk about these and then I'm going to tell you the results. So remember, I had talked to this doctor. We had a zero. What happened? Okay, so hang on, let me just recap. I'm just going to recap here, guys. <clears throat> okay. Yes, Endoflex is oil, Endogize is supplement. Love, Thyramin, good. I love this chart, so easy to use. Good, 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 good. Yes. I've heard hormone testing is super important for all kinds of things. I need to look into it more. Yes, yes. And when you're hormone testing, what they do is they take your blood every other day for a cycle of 30 days so that they can see how your um, how your estrogen and progesterone is, is waving through your 30-day cycle. Um, I'm curious if this oil also gives a protocol for the male because sperm poly also... 
Yes, yes. The um, the book does talk about male uh, fertility as well. So get your man on the protocols that she got these in the book. And a lot of it is very similar stuff. Don't just have them start taking all this because that could actually hurt them and hurt you as well. You should both get tested to see how many eggs you have. And if you are ovulating late or whatever's going on, if you have a thyroid issue, if your hormones are out of whack and you need to get that in check. And then also what's their sperm count? Are they shooting blanks? If they are. Nothing you do then is, is going to help. You can snort essential oils and pray to your young living god gary d young but it's that's not gonna work and i had him doing it too i just didn't have enough room to like put it in the presentation but yes absolutely i know that i included um, ninja and a lot of uh, antioxidants so you can choose from super c to uh, vitamin e she talks about you know all the antioxidants but i had him doing ninja all the time to really beef up his sperm because there are lots of sperm indicators you know there's like sperm speed and sperm shape and sperm like you know like they have to measure all of them um so yes i had him doing all of it have him do also have him do the um multivitamin master formula as well okay really important to get your to get your partner on board to all this as well so just to recap, where we are in the story right now is I was in a learning phase. I had gone through many years of trying to conceive, four years, I think, of trying to conceive to no avail. I did two IUIs. We did an IVF. Um, we, they um, retrieved 18 eggs, and we ended up with zero embryos after day five, which was heart-wrenching and horrible. We were crying our eyes out. And then we decided if we're going to do this again, which we are, then on day five and day six, we're going to be at Disneyland. So that way, if we're going to be at Disneyland, that, that way, if whether we have great results or whether we have horrible results, who cares? We're going to be at Disneyland. We'll, we'll either be dancing for joy or, or we'll be crying our eyes out at Disneyland. You know what I'm saying? So we planned ahead. Plan ahead for that day five and day six if you're doing IVF to like make sure you're in a good place to handle whatever results come your way. So so what happened at this point in my timeline, right? We did the egg retrieval. I think that was in June. Talked to the doctor at the, uh, July 1st, as, first, as early as we could get an, an appointment with her. She said, try this book. I don't know. I don't know. It may resonate with you, but yeah, I'm still hopeful for you guys. Sure. Just throw down another 30 grand for another couple of egg retrievals. And I'm like, Okay, so I go into this book and I do a deep dive into this book. I line up all myself on the same day and I'm ordering them online ASAP, right? I'm getting them delivered to my house ASAP because I'm like, we're going to do this. We're going to do it for three months in a row. At the end of three months, we're going to do a second retrieval and see what happens. And so this was my little experiment on my little body, okay? So we have really great results after three months and that's what I'm here to show you. But first, I want to tell you about Omega Gize. <clears throat> Excellent source of omega-3s. This is like basic. Let me share my screen. omega dyes is basic. Fertility basics. Okay, there's fertility basics, and then there's fertility like refinements and targeted, depending upon your condition, like PCOS, um, recurring miscarriage, that, you know, like sperm, sperm issues, da, 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 right? So but the basics are definitely your probiotic, your omega dyes, your multivitamin. Um, okay, as, as for starters, those are your like bottom, like this is like uh, baseline, baseline. Omega dyes so important because it includes CoQ10, and CoQ10 is very important for fertility, um, and the fatty acids and everything. So also it helps to prevent vitamin D deficiency uh, because this is a very special blend. Omega dyes is more powerful than your typical fish oil that you're going to get at Costco. Um, it's it's a very special formulation that helps prevent vitamin D uh, deficiency and does all these wonderful things. But truly, the formula that Young Living has is special, unique, and very powerful. I trust these Young Living supplements. You know Young Living was a supplement company before it was an essential oils company? Like, okay, oh, this is what it is. This is the fish oil that Young Living uses is molecularly distilled molecular distillation ensures the highest quality fish oil by removing toxins from the oil that are released from the fish during distillation. <coughs> but Young Living adds clove to help preserve. And clove is a top of the orax scale, which clove- well, Especially with how expensive these products are, and don't get me wrong, vitamins are kind of expensive anyways, but why not just go, hear me out, to Target. And if you want to get oils, if you want to be natural, cool, okay. But you can do all that without going through an MLM. Also, Young Living was not a supplement company. It's always been essential oils. So stop lying. And if you want to know the craziness about Young Living, go watch my deep dive that I did on them and you will find out the craziness about the CEO and founder and first owner of the company and how much of a garbage human being he is and how he believed his own misinformation so much that it caused, I think it was his daughter, literal newborn came out of the schmagine and died because they did a water birth in a jacuzzi. Not supposed to do that. He said to like leave her underwater. That's manslaughter. This is what it is. This is the fish oil that Young Living uses is molecularly distilled molecular distillation ensures the highest quality fish oil by removing toxins from the oil that are released from the fish during distillation. <coughs> but Young Living adds clove to help preserve. And clove is the top of the orax scale, which clove helps your antioxidants, okay? So clove also helps to support reproductive health. I'm obsessed with the fact that her bullet points are fish. How cute is that? Also, I doubt that any of that's true because it has come out recently that allegedly, I say recently within the last year, that allegedly the whole like seed, like farm to seal or whatever, seed to seal, whatever type of thing they do, Young Living with their essential oils is allegedly complete BS, which is crazy absolutely crazy. And so now I don't believe anything they do or say. I mean, I never really did because the founder of the company is absolutely crazy. And then so is his wife, but you know, or his second wife, I guess. German chamomile further supports the body's proper inflammatory responses. So that's important for reproductive health to keep inflammation down. In addition to their individual benefits, adding this combination to omega increases its absorption rate by 15 times. Okay. You don't want to be taking a fish oil and have it run right through you, but you want it to be absorbed into your body. 
so that it's effective. In addition to the amazing benefits of fish oil, omega also gives you 237%. But if your body doesn't like need that and like does like it's like doesn't have that one factor or one key thing like missing to where it would need that extra supplement, like it is just going to run through you. The daily recommended recommended dose of vitamin D. So that's also very important to know. Prenolone Plus is another fertility basic. Can you use omega while pregnant? I did. I heck yeah, I did. Okay. Um, I, I went for so long thinking you couldn't improve egg quality. I started seeing an acupuncturist and she was the first doctor to say that number can go up. It can be so encouraging to hear this. Yes, yes. Um, yes, it is possible. And you just have to get the right support. So would you take a vitamin D supplement with omega just No, I would do both. But yeah, both. Vitamin D, the, the vitamin D supplement as well as omega Gize, both of them. So Prenolone Plus Cream is another fertility basic. You wanna, like, what I did is I rubbed it at, bottom, um, at my lower abdomen twice a day. Okay, this is why it's so powerful for um, reproductive health. Um, it helps. Okay, first of all, DHEA. I'm gonna start from the bottom because that's like the punchline. DHEA is so important for reproductive health. Any book, any study that you read will tell you, oh, DHEA. DHEA is banned in Australia. You can't even order it or something. Um, see, look, although banned in certain quantities in countries, research shows that DHEA increases chance of spontan spontaneous conception, yields higher number of eggs and embryos and IVF, improves egg quality, lowers risks of miscarriage, and lowers rate of chromosomal abnormality. So, Prenolone Plus is like, a, it's a no-brainer, basic fertility support. In addition to your omega dyes, your Life Nine, and your multivitamin and your vitamin D. Okay, so we're just adding, adding to your baseline here for reproductive health. It is speculated that prenolone is highly discriminative as it converts to, up to other nutrients only as they are needed in the body. So it is, it is literally, it's bio-aware. It is, it is aware of what your body needs and it will adapt. It's one of those adaptogens like Dr. Ollie talks about all the time. There are no reports of side effects that have been reported even after decades of use of, of prenolone plus. It's a neurosteroid steroid that improves the transmission of nerve impulses and facilitates communication between brain cells. It helps support healthy adrenal glands and improve our resistance to stress. It also helps up uplift the mood. And then all sorts of stuff like the top line, non-toxic, promotes tissue repair, promotes nerve regeneration, improves delta waves, sleep. Sleep, sleep is so important for fertility as well. Lifts your mood, improved immunity, immunity, like the antioxidants, keeping your immune system really high, so important for reproductive health. Stress reduction, big. Relief of inflammation, reduction of PMS, menopausal symptoms, supports healthy myelin sheaths. Okay, just Google myelin sheaths and understand why that's so important. Protect from high cortisol, cortisone, and enhances memory. Okay, good. Look, DHEA is banned in Canada too, Lucy says. So, <clears throat> Another really basic, basic, basic supplement that I mentioned before, but we're going to go into it a little bit more. These are a, these are a lot of medical claims, and this is really concerning to me. I'm not saying that like steroid cream and all that others like inflammatory cream and stuff like that like can't help, but it's it's just so gross because obviously like what is she going to link? She's going to link her own like storefront, right? And when you're talking about stuff like this and she's saying like, yeah, this, all of these things, taking all of these things, you know how much money this stuff is? Let me tell you. Don't worry. I'm going to tell you. So I don't think she's done suggesting things yet, but I went on the Young Living website and went over every single thing and added it to my cart that she suggested in this call and from that little like chart that she did and it comes out to $558.50 so far. That is so expensive. Absolutely ridiculous. And she's probably going to make so much money off of this Zoom call, off of desperate people, unfortunately. I knew that I had like this latency phase three condition. Then I wanted to do Femigen to try to even out my hormones and make them wave when they're supposed to wave. Um, instead of like, you know, that's another thing as you get older, your, your hormones, are, you know, the wave gets smaller and smaller. Well, I need some big waves here to support my reproductive health. So <clears throat> that's one of the reasons I added this next level Femigen to my basic reproductive support supplements. Uh, Daviana supports the blood, wild yam root supports a healthy inflammatory response. Um, the, all these amazing roots and herbs and ginseng and like, just read about these. If you, I went on a Google rampage when I was really diving deep into this. And um, this is such a very, very, very powerful supplement, Femigen, with all these incredible herbs and minerals. Um, so read more about all this. We've got the cardiovascular and nervous system support. <clears throat> female hormone support. We've got blood and liver. We've got um, support. We've got energy boosters, immune support, supporting libido, because you know, when you're trying to get pregnant, whew, it can be exhausting. <laughs> Last time they pulled 18 eggs. This time they pulled 21. So eh, you know, not that huge of a difference, but you see a difference in the second line there. It says mature eggs, six good, 10 fair, two poor. I was like, that's new. I don't think we had those. I don't think we had those like separated out last time. What's that all about, right? Why are they telling me six good, 10 fair, two poor? Um, and so if you look at the previous one, they did not segment for me. They just said, 14 total. Well, why didn't they separate? So after the fact, I asked my doctor, why didn't in, in our June retrieval, in our first retrieval, why didn't you separate our mature eggs out into good, fair, poor? And she said, well, because you only had one good one. Okay, so this one, we, 14 were mature, but only one was good. This one, we had 18 mature and six were rated good. Six, so that is the difference. I don't know if you can see it in the small print. 
But we went. It's truly wild how she's really like, she has presented this well, even though it's not great information or misinformation. It does, like, if I didn't know anything about this and I was, you know, just her prime type of victim for this scam, in my opinion, a scam. Like I said, a lot of people are probably going to fall for it, unfortunately. Don't you think that getting your hormones in check and having the proper testing done, like she said she did, but she isn't focusing on that, and then addressing those certain things might have something to do with getting your reproductive health back on track and not the $600 worth of supplements that you've been ingesting. Which also, it's probably more than that, actually, because I didn't even check if those are all like three month supplies. They're probably not. So it's at least $600. From the first retrieval, they pulled 18 eggs, but only one of them was good quality. The second retrieval, after three months of me doing that regimen hardcore, like, like it's, um, like it's Navy SEAL hell week for three months in a row. I would never miss supplement. They pulled 21 eggs and six of them were good quality. That is major, massive, huge. And that made all the difference. So let me walk you through the days as we went along. <clears throat> 21, they pulled six were good. Let's just look at those numbers. Then you look at day three and, and we were on pins and needles, but we're like, we're going to Disneyland on day five. So whatever day three is, it's all, it's all good. So day three, 15. <clears throat> By day three, see, there she is. <laughs> I'm going to cry. Okay, so this is Jillian, <clears throat> who is an, our miracle baby. So that's what happened. We did a third, um, we did do a third retrieval three months later, only because we had bought a package that, you know, and then we got an extra egg after that. But we still got great. I was still, I, I decided to do the supplement regimen, but I decided to give myself grace. And if I forget a day or whatever, then, then I'd be okay since we already have two. Okay. So then in February, three months later, we did a third retrieval and we actually got another little sweet little hatching embryo that was eligible to be frozen. So this is our little jelly baby. And um, the following July of 2019 is when we did the transfer and we called her Spark while she was in my belly because we transferred her. We saw her take her first roller coaster ride from the lab into my belly on July 3rd, which was so close to Independence Day. So we That's really cute. I love when people have like what they're like what they called their baby like in their womb. Like one of my friends called hers like her little her little poppy, her little poppy seed. I just think it's so cute. I am going to censor out the little girl's face, but just know. This is one of the cutest children that I've ever seen in my life. And I'm going to go through and see if there are any questions I can answer right now. But that's our Jilly baby. She's Jillian Sage Cross. Um, wish I had known all this when I was trying. I was 38 and thankfully I have a 19 year old daughter. Oh, yay. I needed this wisdom so much. Crystal says, I have issues with my myelin sheets due to an autoimmune disorder. So that's very interesting. Yes. So check out that supplement that I was covering about. Uh -huh. um, Lucy says, not a scientist, but you've done your research. Amen. Absolutely. I've had recurring miscarriages and have developed antibodies after having my O plus daughter and I have hypothyroidism and hypertension, it feels like everything is against me having a second baby. Oh, I feel you. And mm, my heart, my heart's going out to you. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, well, Crystal, you're not alone. If you want to if you want to private message me, then I'd be, I'd love to be a listening ear for you. Um, Jessica, thank you for giving me a pillbox. Wow. Such an amazing difference. Can Femigen replace HRT? I don't know what HRT is. If anybody can help me out there. Um, um, I hated that part of IVF. Oh, the waiting. Ugh, ugh. Danielle has a Jillian. Yay! HRT is hormone replacement therapy, isn't it? That cannot replace that. That's not okay. At least she said she doesn't know what it is, but like, yikes. Danielle has a Jillian. Yay! Oh, that's so sweet. Yes. And so that is my story. Thanks, everyone. Do you feel like it would have changed anything in conceiving without a thousand percent? A thousand percent, yes. Okay, this is a question. Crystal says, I really want to dig into this question. Do you feel like it would have changed anything in conceiving without IVS? IVF, sorry, IVF, without IVF. So a thousand percent, yes, 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 yes. Um, I, hindsight is always 2020 and because everybody's story is so different and different things help different people. And maybe my story isn't going to help you, but maybe you can take something that will help you on your journey. And it's like, it's fertility is, a, it's a struggle. Like it's so hard, but I'm telling you, if I had not done IVF, and if I had known about, it starts with the egg, that book, it starts with the egg. If I had known about that book and known about the protocols in the back of the book, because I do believe supplements make a huge difference, then a thousand percent, I would have, before doing IVF, I would have absolutely come up with my protocol. See, it's exactly what I said at the beginning is that sh there are going to be people that are going to, instead of talking to their OBGYN or going to see a specialist regarding this, that they're going to jump straight to doing a bunch of supplements and just BS and spend $600 to do a three-month protocol where you don't even know if these are, you know, the things that you need to take because a lot of people will be like, oh, well, I don't know if I like actually need to take this, but it's not going to hurt. Then why do it if you don't need, to, if you actually don't need to? Like that's absolutely pointless and like, yeah, it actually could hurt you or hinder you. 
whatever. It, that's so frustrating. And one reason why I wanted, and this is the end of the call, but one reason why I wanted to focus on this and talk about this and really go over this video is because she's not outwardly manipulative. Like this story, her, her story's great. I'm so happy that they were able to have their beautiful daughter. They're super blessed they were able to do that and able to afford it 1 million percent because that's so expensive and it takes a toll on your finances, a toll on your relationship, a toll on your body. A lot of people don't realize just how crazy IVF can be on your body. Yikes. So like I was saying, the reason why I wanted to talk about this so badly is because it's not outward. Like it seems like, oh, it's like a sob story and then, but it's not like a crazy sob story like we usually hear. You know, I was living in a basement. I had seven arms. I was poor, depressed. I was, you know, about to unalive myself. I got divorced. I, you know, my life was horrible. It's more of, you know, me and my husband are doing great. Like, we're tr we were trying to get pregnant. We couldn't get pregnant. I had this, this, this. And it is something that, of course, not everyone can relate to. But when someone can relate to it, it's such a an emotional and like a deep connection that you can have that it's so much easier for that other person to manipulate you into like anything. And especially because it's so emotional. Like, yeah, finances, all that, like your why, whatever, like that's emotional. Sure. But trying to conceive and just feeling so empty and like you're at the end of your rope and like this is my fault like this is my body that's the problem blah blah, blah. and having all these what ifs and then this person saying that there's like this magical regimen that could like have it so that you could get pregnant like that's I mean people will do anything I mean some people will literally do anything to be able to get pregnant and that's it's so messed up for them to take advantage of that I don't think and this is another reason why I wanted to bring this up too. I don't think that she even realizes how manipulative it is because I think that she believes exactly what she's saying, that all these supplements helped. And a lot of MLM people are like that. They believe the like the lies that they are telling because they don't realize that they're lies. So that's why I'll say some of the times, like knowingly or unknowingly, they are manipulating someone or they are lying and they are not being truthful. So I think this is a case where it's, it's unknowingly, but... It is really unfortunate, and especially with how expensive that is, it's just really sad. And I wouldn't wish this type of manipulation and just, like, someone taking advantage of you during that time, because that can be really, really, really hard. I get it. I've been there. It's just so sad. So please trust in professionals, not people that are like, oh, I have this alternative thing, especially when you haven't actually seen a fertility specialist, a even gone to an OBGYN and stuff like that. So again, this is not about this lady specifically or her story. I don't know her. I don't need to. This is just an example. If there's one person using this to manipulate people, again, knowingly or unknowingly, there's a million others, okay? And we've seen that. I hope you know that whatever you're going through, your feelings are valid. And also whatever you're going through, it's temporary. I know I haven't said that in a while, but if it's something that's horrible, it's temporary. So don't worry. You're going to get through it. You're going to see your way through it. You're not going to feel like this forever. Pain you're feeling is nothing compared to the joy that is coming. That's one of my favorite Bible verses. But then also, if you're having a great time right now, living your best life, you're thriving, that's also temporary. So live in the moment. Don't take your success and your happiness for granted. And above all else, please subscribe. We are super close to 100,000 subscribers and I would really appreciate it if you subscribed. If you subscribed, if you subscribed, I would love you forever. So stay spicy and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.